Hello fellow peasants. Today I'm going to be revisiting my top 10 horror films of all time. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 horror films of all time. Two years ago when I first started the channel, I, uh, I did my top 10. But as time goes on, things shuffle places, things move around. And so you can always go back and look at my first video. Uh, uh, but this is going to be like a volume two, a part two, or just a revisited, whatever you want to call it. Just to see how my tastes change over time. Things move in and out. Uh, so number 10 is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I like this film. I'm not a huge fan of it. it it is in my top 10 but um you know i it is what it is there's not much story here these kids are in texas they go to this abandoned house um it's not technically abandoned but you know this crazy family lives there um leatherface is there he's got a chainsaw he chases him around he cuts him up um not a whole lot of storyline but it is a classic it's a 70s staple um it's good grindhouse, like uh, grainy 16 millimeter film. It just has a very raw uh, aesthetic to it that I really like. And um, I also uh, really appreciate that it, it's, it's called Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but there's like almost no blood in the film, really. I mean, there is some, there is some blood, but it's nowhere near what you would think a movie with this title uh, would have. Um, you would assume this would be blood, guts, and gore everywhere. But it's not. Uh, it's an excellent film, and it is number 10. Number 9 is Rosemary's Baby. Uh, this is a 1969, I think 69, 68, somewhere around there, uh, Roman Polanski film. Uh, it's one of his first huge films. Uh, basically, um, Rosemary and her husband move into this apartment in New York. Her husband Guy is an actor and they get he gets involved with these neighbors next door who are Satanists and um, he conspires with them to uh, to have fame. And if you haven't seen this movie, I'm not going to spoil a whole lot for you, but let's just say he's a shitty husband <laughs> and um, and he does things that are pretty crazy uh, just to land some acting jobs and uh yeah give this movie uh, a world check it out uh, if you've never seen it i don't want to spoil just how buck wild this is but anyway guys number eight is house of the devil directed by ty west this is the first film i've ever seen from ty west i remember when i first watched house of the devil i was like I thought I legit thought it was an 80s film the way it was shot like the cinematography the music I mean everything about it just feels super 80s and uh found out it was shot in 2009 like years later so I've always been a big fan of this I had it on DVD for the longest time finally got it on Blu-ray basically what the film is about is this young college girl um she needs some money for rent for this apartment she's getting into like she needs a deposit or whatever and she finds a babysitting flyer at her college um, and she goes out to this abandoned old Victorian house, this creepy old house, and uh, and the guy's like, well, I, I, we kind of lied in the ad. We don't have a child. You're going to be watching my elderly mother who's upstairs somewhere in the attic or something. And she's kind of creeped out by it, and her friend went with her, and she's like, I don't think you should do this. But she's like, I really need the money, and he offers her like three times what he said in the ad. And she ends up taking the job, and I'll leave it there because um, I don't want to spoil too much. It's it, it's one of those movies where like you kind of want to know what's going on at this house. Um, but anyway, that's my number eight. Number seven is the first Scream film. I got this little three pack here. I'm gonna get the 4K up, the 4K trilogy box here next month. But I just got this little trilogy case right here for the Blu-rays. But the first Scream film is uh really good really good it, it it changed horror uh it reinvigorated the slashers it said horror can be smart really i mean 
not that there weren't like smart horror films before, but Scream like was was meta. You know what I mean? And technically, New Nightmare. Like, technically, what Wes Craven kind of did this similar in New Nightmare, but I don't think a, I don't think it caught on. I don't think a lot of people got it. And then they did meta with Scream, and it clicked with people. And um, yeah, basically. The film is about two teenagers who are obsessed with horror films and they are uh, trying to kill people. One per, well, one of the killers has a motive. One doesn't really have a motive. They're just kind of crazy. Um, and, you know, but they're going around the high school killing people. Uh, and you could, you could, it's kind of like a whodunit. All the screams are like a whodunit. Most of you seen Scream, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, they're great films. They're kind of like entryway horrors. They're like the gateway to horror films. Uh, they're not like over the top blood, guts, and gore or anything like that. But I like the first Scream. It's edgy. It's it's got excellent dialogue, witty dialogue. Uh, Kevin Williamson is a genius. He knows how to write some really good, and it, and his writing was just spot on for the time. Like. The 90s were very tongue-in-cheek, edgy, I don't give a fuck uh, decade, and Scream really um, revels in that attitude, that 90s attitude. Number six, 1978's Halloween. Yes, yes. Um, what's there to say about 1978's Halloween? Directed by John Carpenter, director of photography is Dean Cundey. Um, it's considered the grandfather of slashers. I don't necessarily agree with that. I now think Black Christmas is the godfather of slashers. Um, but whatever. I The argument can be made that, that Halloween is the first slasher, I suppose. Um, because it kind of plays by more of the rules that we're used to now than Black Christmas did. Um... But yeah, basically, Michael Myers is six years old. He kills his sister, Judith. Uh, he goes off to some insane asylum. Smith's Grove for 15 years. He comes back on Halloween night. He breaks out. He comes back to Haddonfield, and he stalks babysitters. And he kills several people on Halloween night. And Dr. Loomis, his psychologist, is uh, on the hunt for him, trying to track him down to stop him before he causes any more damage. And that's pretty much the uh, synopsis of Halloween. Um, I don't know who hasn't seen this movie by now. If you haven't, go check it out. All right. Number five, The Amityville Horror. This is the original 1979. I just reviewed this on the channel. Uh, great fall atmosphere. Good, creepy atmosphere. Basically, this family moves into this house where there was a mass murder. Uh, the family that lived in the house before... Uh, this guy named Ronnie DeFeo uh, murdered um, members of his family, he shot him in the middle of the night with a shotgun. And to this day, no one really knows how he went around room to room shooting people and no one ever got out of bed. Uh, some people think that it might have been his sister. His sister also might have been involved in the murders and he shot her at last minute, turned on her at the last minute. like, And she, she helped him for, for a while uh, that night. But uh, basically, uh, 13 months later, after that uh, mass murder, the Lutzes, George and Kathy Lutz, move into the house, and they start experiencing weird, creepy things. They knew what was going on. They knew what happened in the house beforehand. And George Lutz starts, you know, feeling really cold, and he starts acting like a dickhead. And, um, yeah, they start experiencing supernatural things, and George starts feeling like... Like he's going crazy and shit. Um, but yeah, great movie, great movie. Oh, and by the way, during my last uh, review of this film, I said Jody was a uh, girl who lived in the house prior who got murdered. That's 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 not true. Jody um, was a demonic pig that that was uh, George Lutz's daughter's imaginary friend. Um, I was confusing the 2005 remake with uh, Ryan Reynolds, where Jody is a uh, Jody is a DeFeo who lived in the house previously. Um, so I was mixing the two films for some reason in my head. 
Number four is Black Christmas. 1974's Black Christmas. Um, I came to this movie late in life. Uh, I first saw it like three years ago. Uh, I only saw it really because of Cody Leach and Dave McRae. Um, never really heard of this film before that. And it's excellent. Basically, as this guy goes around, he breaks into this sorority house on Christmas break. I think they're on break. And he hides up in the attic and he calls them from the attic and makes like weird creepy phone calls to them. And he slowly picks off the girls one by one in the house and the elderly woman who watches over the girls in the sorority house. Um, great film, great Christmas atmosphere, good 70s horror atmosphere. The acting in this is great. You got Margot Kidder in this. Um, it's set in the US, but it was filmed in Canada, uh, which you, you can kind of tell a bit. I mean, they, they put some American flags around in the police stations and stuff like that to kind of like throw you off the trail, but um, you know. Excellent film. It's definitely climbed up the rank. I think it was further back in my first ranking that I did a couple years ago. Uh, but yeah, Black Christmas, 1974. That is my number four horror film of all time. Number three is the original Omen. Yes, the original Omen. This is like a little trilogy pack that I have here, like a little Blu-ray pack. I know there's another case. There's like a better case, but I'm waiting for like a proper 4K upgrade for for these I, I i want like i want like the trilogy in 4k i don't want to just go buy the first film in 4k and then have the other two on blu-ray i'd rather just i'm kind of weird like that i like to have everything be the same format uh if it's a franchise but anyway uh the original omen stars gregory peck basically um him and his wife were having a baby he's a he's a u.s ambassador and uh, his baby gets swapped out with uh, the son of the devil at the beginning of the movie. Uh, they take his son and kill it and replace his baby with the Antichrist. And so he's raising the Antichrist. They think it's weird that Damien never gets sick and all these deaths keep happening around him. And there's all these premonitions of like, you know, there's like this photographer that follows the family around and in his photographs, there's like ropes around necks and there's um, piercings through people. There's just like, the, his photographs are like omens, omens of things to come. And basically, um, Damien keeps killing people left and right. Well, not like him, himself physically, but like manifestations of things around him happen. And... Um, the father basically has to come to grips with reality and go, okay, I gotta kill this fucker because he's the Antichrist. I, I, I have to believe it now, it's as wild as it is. Excellent film, good 70s horror, good fall atmosphere, good just cold creepiness. Excellent, excellent movie. The number two horror movie of all time is The Shining, starring Jack Nicholson. Um, what is there to say about The Shining? Fantastic. Um, Jack Torrance gets a job offer at this hotel called the Overlook Hotel uh, to watch over this hotel for the winter. And um, it's, a, it's a haunted hotel. Some creepy crap happens in it. The guy during the interview, when Jack does the interview, he's like, hey, look, you know, something happened here years ago where this guy got cabin fever and killed his family with an ax. <laughs> and, you know, and Jack Torrance is like, well, that doesn't bother me. And so he takes the job and slowly over the course of the movie, um, weird things happen. He starts f getting more on edge. And eventually at, by the end of the movie, he's swinging an ax at his wife and son and he's completely lost his fucking mind. Um, excellent movies directed by Stanley Kubrick. One of my favorite directors. Uh, you can't go wrong with this film. I've seen this film tons and tons of times. I put it on sometimes just to have it on in the background while I'm doing other shit. Like, it's just one of those movies. Like, I just love to have it on. It's it's an experience every time. Excellent film. And finally, you, if you guys watch the channel, you probably know what's coming. Uh, my number one horror film of all time is 1973's The Exorcist, directed by William Friedkin. Rest in peace, William Friedkin. 
what a genius, um, what a badass director, even though some, some of his tactics uh, were not uh, professional. Uh, but damn, he got results. But damn, he got results. Um, great film, great film. What is there to say that I haven't already said about 1973's The Exorcist? Uh, this quick synopsis is... Um, Chris McNeil and Reagan McNeil. Uh, her Chris McNeil is the mother. Reagan is the child. They live in Georgetown, Washington, D.C. Uh, they are there temporarily while Chris McNeil shoots a film, and the little girl becomes possessed. Eventually, after so many doctor visits and psychology visits and things like that, um, they are left with no options, and they need to seek out a uh, exorcism from the Catholic Church. Uh, all the while this is happening, you are following along with a priest called Father Karras. Father Karras is someone who's struggling with his faith. He's a psychologist. He works for the church in Georgetown University, and he's kind of losing his faith. Um, he's struggling with his mother. His mother's elderly. She's sick. Uh, he has to put her in a home. And, and you know, so he's, he's having his own struggles. And then she, you know, the mother comes to him and says, can you help me? So really the exorcist to me is a story about Father Karras who is losing his faith, but uh, it is restored by the end. It's about a group of people who just kind of need each other. You know, uh, the, the McNeils um, are not religious and they're possessed and they need the help of the church. And Father Karras is uh, losing his faith. And so Reagan's possession uh, helps him restore that. So everyone kind of helps each other play. I kind of just figure figure each other's lives out in a weird way in this film. They all kind of need each other in this film in some really weird way. Um, excellent film, excellent drama. It's a slow burn. It doesn't give you everything right up front. It moves at a slow pace, but yet at the same time, the editing that freaking uses the quick cuts, um, it never feels like it's slow or dull. Everything in this film is needed and necessary. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about The Exorcist. It's it's a masterpiece. All right, guys, that is my top ten horror films of all time. That is my revisited volume two, if you want to call it that. Um, like I said, I did this two years ago. I think some of these shuffled around. Two or three of these moved around in here. Um, yeah, that's it. Have a good one, peasants. Peace out. Let me know your top ten down below. By the way, if you got a top ten, top five, whatever. Let me know what you think down below of my top 10. Have a good one, peasants. Peace out. Bye-bye.